Amy Beth Menendez, great to see you again. I mean, we've, we're always seeing you on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Hi, David. How are you? It's great to see you always and um, talk pre-press and pre-flight. And today I think we're going to discuss a little bit about the Pantone uh, situation with Adobe and PostScript fonts and just everything that's going on as the year winds down and um, what's going on in the end and workflow with um, printing and pre press. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I really, really was glad, uh, you know, we could get in touch with you again because yeah, you're, you're really dealing with this Pantone, what we call debacle or, or situation like, you know, uh, from end to end. So what, how, yeah. How's it looking on your side? For me personally, and um, thank you also for reiterating the word debacle. <laughs> if you look up the definition of debacle, it just means a complete failure. And to me, like just, um, you know, Pantone and Adobe not being able to renegotiate the terms for whatever reason, uh, you know, is just a, it's a complete failure of the, of the whole, you know, situation. It just wasn't... The, the impact of this just was not the depth of it. I feel like just was not taken into consideration, you know, the ripple effects uh, of, of this, of, of them parting ways for whatever reason, right. Um, how it, how it has impacted the end to end workflow. Um, you know, the people that get in the files to pre press to, um, you know, to pre, people that are pre-flighting the files to, you know, the files that are going to the RIP, to the printers that are mixing inks, to the designers that are now like, you know, having to buy more software to, you know, uh, the people that are proofing that have to update their color libraries, you know, like just every point along the process like has been impacted. Like the domino effect of this is just like, insane like the ripple effect like um you know it's just impacted the entire industry in some way like if you people probably don't even realize it but they're they're affected you know right um and whether or not like you know we, we, we all have to just like find a solution of like how we're going to deal with this because regardless i'm going to be like getting files that have new pantone colors in it and basically, like, my dilemma is also, um, you know, I, I really wish that there was, like, some alternate, um, you know, version. But, you know, I'm very into color management. You know, like, I'm a G7 certified expert. So, like, consistency across the board, you know, like, it's, it's super important, like, in the back of my mind, like, that, you know, the lab values and the color recipes and, like, you know, if you're printing overseas and I'm printing here and, like, you know, you're designing in, you know, this country and I'm designing, you know, that like whatever swatches I'm using and whatever swatches, you know, like you're not using, um, you know, flam tone and fam tone okay. and, you know, like we're all using, you know, like color consistency, like is, is super important as well. So right. like, obviously that is a huge concern for me as well, but <clears throat> the, what they're offering right now is not even a working option. Right. right. And you're going to, you're going to be able to show us that in a second here. Uh, 176 printers responded to the survey in the UK and 75% or more were still getting 50% or more bad files in that they were not charging to correct. So uh, for the most part, but just that fact that so many pre-flight problems are still coming in. And now this type of situation on top of it is just really, uh, Right, because yeah. uh, a PDF is supposed to be, you know, everything is protected, right? Um, colors are supposed to be embedded, fonts are supposed to be embedded, and what if you have to fix a PDF file? Right. What if you need to remap a spot color? Like there, there's so many, like you know, right. But to make clear, of worms that like you could know, be you opened up, open. right? Or we don't know yet how it's gonna, ha what's gonna, because ha uh, just to be, I think uh, that so everyone knows, like. Um, the native files have potential problems like InDesign file with Pantone. There's going to be unsupported Pantone colors in InDesign. There are a few Pantone colors or swatches that are still supported in InDesign. I can list right. those. Uh, Photoshop's going to have the same issue. 
and particularly with uh, channels and what have you, you know, your, your colors just turn black instead of what the, the beautiful Pantone colors they were. So this is obviously yeah. terrible, but a PDF and Illustrator are similar. A PDF, if it was created properly and everything's embedded in there, it should be okay, right? Right. Right. But but the biggest problem is also for, for us, you know, like um, the company, you know, that I work for is like one of the big top five publishers and we do like a lot of special effects and bump plates and we use a lot of spot channels and, you know, different effects in, in Photoshop and <clears throat> they combined like the metallic libraries, like, yeah. you know, so um you're looking for yeah yeah you just, might be looking for like a, a five color you know a five number metallic library and you'd be like where is the premium metallic library and now it's like combined in in the premium met metallic library and you wouldn't even know that like it's not even something that they're telling you and you could only even find that library now if you have this app or if you were lucky enough to back up your old library. Right. <laughs> right. Which you gave a great tip on LinkedIn. You're, you're, yeah. Right. If you're opening up one of your old files, it's just going to appear black, you know? Yeah. That's just not, yeah, that's just totally uh, crazy. Yeah. And so the, the big question I have on the PDFs though, because they should be fine, but what if someone edits a, a spot color in P in a, in an older PDF for a, a meeting right. a year ago, <laughs> And now they edit it, and how does that affect the potential, uh, you know, color down the line? These are things we do, I just don't know yet, and I think I think we're going to find out in the coming weeks and months. But um, in any event, maybe you could share your screen and show us like that app you're talking about, some of the wonky things. Right. So <clears throat> first of all, I'm on it, um, a Mac Pro M1 computer, and um, Pantone has already um, come forth and and said that because of the scripting that the applications run on, the Pantone Connect app only runs in Rosetta or um, on, in Photoshop, right? So why would I run, want to run my new computer like in a, in a legacy format, like it runs? There we go, I see now uh, Photoshop 2021. Yeah, so here's Photoshop uh, 2021, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, this is the Pantone Connect app, which is installed through the Creative Cloud app, right? Um, <clears throat> and then you, you know, you just have to register it through um, Pantone Connect, either pay for your pay for your subscription, and then when you click on the plugin, so the plugin in Photoshop 2021 opens up in your window extensions legacy, right? So it is already telling me it's running like as a legacy connection. Mm -hmm. And when you open it up, <clears throat> right? Um, so here, here's the new color of the year, right? Um, I could go to my palette. Just I out today, can, right? <laughs> yeah, it just came out today, exactly. Um, you know, it's just really uh, wonky, um, the whole thing, um, the, the whole app. Like I'm still having trouble getting it into my colors in Photoshop. Um, you know, like you're supposed to be be able to add this. So I'm adding this to my, it's adding it to my creative cloud library swatch as a Pantone swatch, right? Mm -hmm. But um, and I've added this spot color channel, but can I now add this Pantone red? Probably to my spot channel. I don't know. These are the color libraries that I installed, though, from the Pantone Color Manager, which I still have on my computer as well. Right. So, um, but it's just, it's just, it's just really wonky. It's just like you can see, it's very, you know, like all over the place. Like if I go to my InDesign 2023, here is the app. This is what it looks like on the Pantone, um, you know, website. <laughs> and look. Here's my Pantone color of the year, <laughs> Vivid Magenta. Hey, it turned black. <laughs> hey, it turned black in my, uh, let me see if I can scroll down. This thing is so freaking big, right? Instead um, of your, instead of that, was your sort of magenta. Right. Right. So this is um, my inside. Um, and there's no way to make this smaller. It's just very wonky. And you can see like in the, on the Pantone app and like there's some videos on it. It has like nice little swatches with the Pantone numbers when you add it, um, you know, when you add it to your palette, like, you know, 
these just, uh, you know, and if I add it to my swatch, it'll, it adds, it does add to my swatches, like in my. Okay. So let me ask you another question. So let's say you make this InDesign 2023 document with all these Pantone connect, uh, Pantone colors. Yes. And, and you say the InDesign file you sent to your colleague, let's say it's me in this case, and I don't have Pantone Connect in 2023. Yeah, it'll probably, well, I think, well, let's do that, David. I'm well, we'll try that another it. time. So that's just like another question. Yeah. Just curious, you know, or right. for, or more specifically Photoshop, you know. Right. Uh, would that, you said you can only use Pantone Connect in Photoshop 2021 right now? Yep, on an M1 computer. I want, it, really, you can't use it in 2023? Nope, does not run natively. Interesting. Right. So it's still just a wonky workflow. Is right. My point. Right. right. Um, it's not really, yeah. Like, we well, can't I even use really 2023. <laughs> right. I don't really want to work like in 2021 because it doesn't have any of the, you know, the AI and the machine learning functionality that has come out. Come out like, right. The, all the productivity apps that are there in Photoshop, you know. So like just to go back and like add my spot colors like in 2021, it's just it's just a backwards workflow currently. Right. So to me, it's not even a workflow that like is I could use. Right. 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 Um, like to like stay ahead of the game is if I do receive um, if I you know we are working in a PDF workflow. So one thing that I can do is use your flight check apps, which is really really great. And so when I do, um, ha when I'm using like PDFs, like in my workflow or I'm receiving them and I need to check them and um, I can use my, I can go to my ground controls like in your app. And um, I love that there's a setting now. And yeah, so number one, one, I can go to colors, right? And I could show. Um, well, that's not because, right, the PDF, it's, it is supported. So yeah, all right, page layout. If you switch the ground right. control. So I want to go to my page layout mode and I can have it flag like any unsupported Pantone colors. Right. So these are Pantone colors that are not supported <laughs> yeah. in 2022 and newer. So wait, And look at that I PDF. Know. It has type one fonts, you know. <laughs> I know. There you go. Right. So look at that. Yeah. It's crazy. So wait. I think that's everything. Yeah. Yeah. The flight person to the designer, right. you know, to the print production, you know, to and, and everything um, in between, you know, everything in between. So yeah. let's first show this flight so, check, and then we'll we'll split switch to the yeah. other. Look screen. at my flight check; like you can't even see the spot colors. Right. So here's a here's a native file, this InDesign file, and there we see some Type One fonts again. <laughs> oh, and there we see uh, a Panto, which does appear to be supported. Um, why is it? Look, it's white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, that, that is interesting. Anyway, so, fl so yeah, flight check will be out soon. Flight check is amazing because it flags type one fonts and unsupported Pantone colors. And so this helps me like, you know, because type one, you know, Adobe stopping supporting type one fonts is, is another wrench, like in my workflow is causing like, you know, there's a lot of like old files that have type one fonts that now have to be replaced with open type face fonts, you know, so it, it's, it's financially, it's a big strain. Like, right. All at one time. All, all at one time. All at once. Right? And then, and then just the whole, the whole nature of everything. Right. Yeah. Well, let's go back right. to the uh, screen here. Thanks for showing flight check. In general, the reason that I'm so vocal about this is because the solution that they're offering is not even a working solution. It's not even like, there's a, a workaround or a viable like solution that they're saying like here, like, you know, use this app and it's going to work with all of your applications and like everything is just like going to seamless, seamlessly continue to flow. Like on, even though like Adobe, you know, came up with this subscription plan, there was no interruption in the workflow. Right. Like it was like, sign up for our apps, like, and you're just going to keep getting the new apps, like every single time they come out. And there basically has no been no interruption. Like if you wanted to pay for it now, like every time like Creative Cloud gets an update, like you just get the next, you know. But with this Pantone Adobe split, right? There, there is, and the Pantone, you know, coming up with this Pantone Connect app, 
right? There has been a complete disruption of the workflow, right? From, you know, all the production people, from the people writing up the jobs, from pre-press to the people that have to pre-flight the jobs to to the proofers, like the color libraries that are, are in all the proofers, to the color libraries that are that are in the rips, you know, think about like large format proofers that like take a file that has, you know, a PDF file that has a, a Pantone color in it and needs to translate it into like um, extended gamut or oranges, greens, and, you know, like <clears throat> where are those like recipes? There's just like so many things that are affected by this. Um, the printers with the inks, like it's it just like the ripple effect is like, is, is just ridiculous. And for me, like I said, it's just a disruption in my workflow. It's a wrench in the process. And um, they're not really offering, there's, there's, I don't see any solution. Right. Well, there, it looks like they're trying and it looks like, the, it looks like this was maybe a, a I don't want to say a rash decision or like it was a quick, quick decision. So they had to scramble. Yeah, to, I don't, know. yeah. I don't want to say like, yeah, they are trying. Right. right? They, they are trying. But it is a concern, right? Right. Oh, I, yeah. If it doesn't work like, in 2023, yeah. Photoshop, that's kind of... Right. So there is, a, but there is a lot of concern. You know, I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to some industry professionals like Doug Isaacs and like people, you know, are concerned about how it affects like the end-to-end -end process of the workflow. And so that's basically right. it. Right. You know, we want to keep working, right? We want to keep printing. We want to keep working on files, you know, and that's basically it. You know, and it's just yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's why I get so upset. Yeah, and I really appreciate you taking the time. I Flight... want to keep printing. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> Always a pleasure to touch base with you, and thanks for chatting about this Pantone saga. And more, you know, this will be continued. Right. So more will be revealed. And everyone, so keep you an... have a great sorry, a great holiday. Oh, right? you too. And... Yeah. And um, we'll be in touch soon. Absolutely. And pe uh, all the people watching, check out Amy Beth on LinkedIn. She, she gives tips every once in a while on, you know, how to handle Pantone and other, other things that come across her plate, so to speak. So, yeah, Amy, thank you. Happy holidays. And we'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Right. Thanks, David. Take care.